foremost, I'd like to recognize that I am speaking here today on Treaty 6 territory. As an immigrant, I'm extremely grateful to be here because without Canada, I wouldn't be who I am. Secondly, thank you so much for lending me your ears. Thank you to Creative uh, Mornings. Thank you for the Alberta Podcast Network for supporting this. Thank you for uh, the fact of allowing us to be in your space. I always thought Edmonton was extremely flat and we had no trees. I have been proven wrong. <laughs> so thank you for changing my perspective today. I appreciate that. Um, being it somebody that is from Somalia, being it that is somebody from Africa, being it that somebody that is different in a uh, community here in Edmonton, uh, it's always challenging for me to try to understand people. And when I was first learning English, it was challenging because I didn't comprehend what people were talking about. And so I learned to read intentions. And so a lot of times people would say things that were completely offensive and inappropriate, things like FOB, which means fresh off the boat. And the more I learned about English, the more I realized that I was actually fresh off the plane. Christopher Columbus came on a boat. <laughs> between us. And so but when I started to see that uh, the intention behind those who were making fun of me wasn't to hurt me, but to make themselves feel better, I started to understand that there was something beyond what I thought about that situation. For me, intention is about others. It's not about myself. And when I talk about intention, for me, intention is the driver of action and words. Words and actions mean nothing without intention for me. If somebody comes up to me randomly on the streets and calls me the N-word, it means absolutely nothing to me because their intention is flawed. Most likely they're hurt, they're going through something that they can't handle. And if I'm the one that becomes the cushion for them, cool, whatever, because we're never gonna see each other again. But if it's a CEO, a boss, somebody who's in a position of power, and they call me that, I know their intention is flawed. Why? Because if they were understanding and they recognized their power, they would not have said certain things. And that's the intention behind it. I'm gonna give you an example of how valuable intention is. Because my father would say something to me growing up that I never understood. But as soon as I became a professional artist, I understood. He said, you don't control the world, you control how you interact with it. It was very, very, very valuable for me to learn that early on. Because the world that we are taught here is built on competition. It's always like, oh, somebody else is competing in this position. Are you smart enough? Are you good enough? But the reality is we can't compare each other to one another. We are extremely different. There is no competition. Human beings are symbiotic creatures. We need each other. And so I've always had that belief. And so there was this incident that happened back in 2012. I could have been 2011 if I'm not mistaken, but I was at City Center Mall. This was before I started driving full time and I used to take the transit. I was at City Center Mall and it was extremely cold outside. And it was winter. And I was standing there and be it for the, for the purpose of the story uh, that God wrote, I was the only person of color I should say black person there. There was a lot of people that were from East India. There were some people from uh, Asia. Uh, there was a lot of Europeans, but I was the only black person. So I'm standing there waiting for my bus, minding my business, and a brother, uh, an indigenous brother walks by, who is definitely intoxicated, looks at me, goes, what are you looking at? And then he calls me the N-word. Everybody that was there looks at me, grabs their metaphorical popcorn, and they're like, this is gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's two diverse people about to go out right now, I wanna see this, but I thought for a second. And I looked at this individual, I said, what is his intention? What made him say that? Because to me, it's not what you said, it's why you said it is most valuable to me. Because words are as important as the meaning that carries them, because right now, if you've never experienced something in your life, if I talk to you about, say, Somalia, it's not gonna resonate like it would with me because it's pretty into my life. It means something to me. And that's another thing about intention is a lot of times we assume that just because it's not part of our life, it's not valuable. Before I get into that story, have you guys ever bought a car or got shoes or clothes before you bought it, you never saw it anywhere? But as soon as you bought it, you saw it everywhere? That's because it became part of your life. Before that, it always existed. It was everywhere. But just because you didn't have any connection or relation to that, it didn't mean anything to you. So one thing I need to explain to people all the time is make as many connections as possible. Unless you go into a community and you say, you know what, I'm uncomfortable in that community, don't talk about a community because you don't know about them, right? So here I am. He calls me the N-word. I look at him. I say, what is his intention? I look at him and I say, listen, I don't know what you're going through today, brother. I know this is Turtle Island. I know this is Treaty 6 territory. I would wish that we could get along together like the three sisters would. He looked at me like, what is going on here? <laughs> right, like he's, I'm assuming he's been feeling some type of resentment or hate from people for him to say that. 
and I grew up with kindness. If somebody gives you hate, you give them love, they're gonna hate you even more, but eventually they're gonna, why am I even hating this person right now, right? <laughs> it's just gonna change the mentality because positivity is a thing that actually works. So I looked at him and said, yo, sit, listen, I apologize, I'm sorry. I don't know what you're going through today, but I'm sorry. He looked at me for a second, confused, comes up to me, gives me a hug, and he goes, it wasn't you, it was those a-holes over there. I look around the corner, it's a bunch of young Somali guys. It's like, oh, <laughs> you guys causing this, right? So his intention wasn't to hurt me, but it was to get neutral. Because what he felt from those guys was that hurt. And so he took that hurt and he made me feel that hurt. But thankfully that hurt was irrelevant to me because his intention was what mattered to me. And that day, we both left on positive terms. We left with a hug, people looked at me like I was a magician. <laughs> but when in reality, I'm just a human being. And so again, intention is extremely valuable. My father, who is beyond optimistic to a fault, he used to get me so mad, like too <laughs> optimistic, you know, especially uh, my father, just a background story, my father was, uh, was born in Somalia, he was born in uh, the countryside, he moved to the city, but he was a street rat, he had absolutely nothing, uh, absolutely no family that was not living in the, or living in the city, he had nothing, and he used to eat from garbage cans, like some of the stuff that he tells me, is mind-blowing, but he always was optimistic. I'm like, how do you do it? He's like, oh, you don't control the world, you control how you interact with them. I'm like, yeah, I heard that a million times, Dad. <laughs> but how do you do that? And he's like, Ahmed, listen, are you alive today? I say, yes, I am. He's like, you're already that much above so many billion of people who have died. Are you living? Are you happy? Are you healthy? He's like, yes. He's like, that's the most important thing. He's like, don't try to fit into a category of what you think you need Find out what you really want and what you really need. Going back to me as an artist, the reason why I chose art as a field, I know I am the title poet laureate right now, but I do stand-up comedy, I do theater, I write. You know, I do all of these different things because it's good for my mental health. When I first started back, I was uh, 16, turning 17. I joined a theater program because my parents were like, this guy's gonna get in trouble when he grows up. I might as well put him in something creative. Smart move by my parents, by the way, right? So I got into that, but I said, you know what? This is what I wanna do for the rest of my life. It makes me feel good. If I can put a smile on people's faces, I'm succeeding. If I can make money for putting smiles on people's faces, man, I'm living the life. And so my intention was, I am going to be a great human being and live happily ever after. Disney, check it out. <laughs> so that was my goal. And anything that comes after that, whether it's good or bad, I didn't look at it as good or bad. I looked at it as an opportunity to grow from or to uh, remove myself from, right? Because everything will happen. I got shortlisted for Paul Laureate twice before I got it this time. The two times I got listed for Paul Laureate uh, were weird. Because the first time uh, somebody, I'm not going to mention names, somebody asked me, were your religion hinder you being a poet laureate? And it was weird, because I'm thinking, oh, what's your intention here? Like, are you you're trying to sound smart? Are you trying to make me look good by saying, no, my religion is not good? I, I don't understand, right? I don't know what that means. Whatever. I go and celebrate the person who got it. Second time around, I get shortlisted. They tell me, oh, I'm a great one. We're looking for a traditional poet. Whose tradition are you talking about, though, right? <laughs> my tradition, your tradition, Shakespeare's tradition, because Shakespeare made words up. You want me to be like Shakespeare? It's weird right now. So it's weird. But again, I have to find out the intention. It's like, you know what? Whatever. I'm not here for them. I'm here to do my community better. And I'm here to make spoken word go further. Whatever. I went and celebrated the person I got it. One of the jury members comes up to me. He goes, he goes, on it. He goes, you know what? I really love your energy. Nothing about my poetry. I love your energy, on it. I said, no, maybe not a poet laureate, though. I go, here we go again. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, maybe you're a bard. People in Arabian Africa are bards. I looked at him, I'm like, if you understood that what you are saying is intended to either A, make me feel good, but you're completely ignorant on how you were approaching it, he would have not have said that. Because he doesn't understand the weight of the words he is using. Because as an immigrant, a lot of times people who are not uh, diverse or people who don't identify as, as, as other don't understand, right? I was explaining to you the car situation. You know, when we talk about racism, people are like, I'm not racist. I'm like, I'm not talking about you as an individual. I'm talking in a system in which we operate. Again, the intention, you have to remember this, right? When a person says something, what are they intending? So often, there are people who just want to disrupt the system and make it bad. But more often than not, when somebody says this is racist or something is racist or something is bothering me, I think as human beings, we should question what 
is the intention behind this person? Are they looking to get neutral? Are they just trying to be equal? Or are they trying to disrupt the system? Because right now I can tell you, if I face 20, you're not a poor lawyer or a bard, how do you think I'm gonna feel after the 20th time, right? It's gonna be like, okay, I'm, I don't wanna hear this crap no more, right? But again, I have to watch my intention because I know that they're not coming off as rude, they're just ignorant. And that's the biggest challenge for an immigrant and a person who is diverse. Often is we have to re-educate people and that's the most challenging. Part. Why are Muslims terrorists? Rather than somebody in the background going, look at that guy with his kufi looking like a terrorist, right? Because at least the person that comes up to me, they're already kind enough to wanna to learn. To me, I consider that learning. We are in a system right now where anybody says something, they get attacked for saying something. We're human beings, we make mistakes. We are supposed to make mistakes. Experience is an accumulation of mistakes and wisdom is an accumulation of experience. If you're not making mistakes, you're not growing. We are not allowed to make mistakes anymore. Somebody will say something and instantly be like, oh my God, that person's racist. Like, do you know who that person is? Do you know their story? Do you understand their history? For me, what's more valuable is making connections rather than ostracizing people because as an individual was ostracized and told that you don't belong here, I'm trying to include as much people as possible. Because again, it's the intention in the long run. Which, what's my intention when I started this? Was to be inclusive, <coughs> welcoming, and to build a better Edmonton and a better community for myself. It's selfish as all heaven. But my intention is, as long as everybody around me is happy, I'm happy, right? So I'm thinking about my happiness as a community thing rather than an individual thing. My happiness is associated with other people's happiness. It's weird. It's weird, but I'm super optimistic now. And my father looks at me and he laughs randomly and weird because he goes, see what I met? I know what you meant, Dad. <laughs> so I have the story, and then I'm gonna um, conclude it with that. So speaking about intention, you don't control the world; you control how you interact with it. Things will happen whether you want them to or not. I didn't get poor Lori those two times. My mother said to me, "Sometimes not getting something is the blessing." Right? We don't realize that because we always want that's that competitive aspect. But this year, like. This is my second year going into it, but this term was the first term that the Poet Laureate got switched from 5,000 honorarium a year to 10,000 honorarium a year. So on my term, I was the first person to get paid 10,000 to be a Poet Laureate. So imagine if I was like, no, you guys are completely, rich. that doesn't change anything, but when you go up to me like this, and the way I felt wasn't very welcoming, I don't think anybody should feel this way. And as an individual, that's what my job is to stomp down doors and just say, what y'all are doing is unwelcoming right now and just walking out of the room. Because when somebody <laughs> feels hurt or bothered, they're not going to change. But when you're coming with welcoming, happiness, and inclusion, that's when they change. I make a joke. I say the professional world is like mountain climbing. The higher up you go, the wider and lonelier it gets. <laughs> so now think about that metaphorically as well, about putting on gear. Because when you're climbing mountains, you have to put on gear, right? So. Are you a traditional poet? I'm putting on my gloves. Oh, maybe you're a bard, not a poet laureate. I'm putting on my boots. That's the mounting gear each day that a person has to do that. But again, I'm grateful to do that because there's a lot of people who don't have that privilege. Right? Again, you have to look at that. So, one day I came home late. My father was all about curfews. He said, Ahmed, your curfew is 10.30. This was from 15. So your curfew is 10.30. You can't come home any later than that. He said, no problem. So I left. I went to play basketball and I came home at 11.40. Why? What happened in my neighborhood, when I used to live in Kitchener, Ontario, it's blocked by a graveyard. And in order to get to the playground, you have to go through this graveyard, right? It's not a big deal, so we used to go through there, but this one time it was closed, and I knew the long way home was about 30 minutes and I wasn't going to make it, right? So I took a different route, but I got lost, and I got home a lot later than I would have if I was taking a normal road. So when I knocked the door, my father answers and he goes, where were you? I said, I'm sorry, Dad, I got lost. He said, no, you didn't. Slammed the door in my face. <laughs> I'm looking around like, what the hell? How does he know? Like, I did, though. Like, and I knocked the door again. I'm like, Dad, I'm sorry, I got lost. He said, no, you didn't. Slammed the door in my face again. Now, my father, extremely philosophical, so I bless you, extremely philosophical. So I say, what is he trying to say right now? What is my dad's intention? What is he trying to get at right now? He's trying to get something. So I knocked the door again. I said, I'm like, Dad, I'm sorry. I grabbed his hand with love. You know, like a job. I'm sorry, Dad. I didn't need to be home late. I got, I got lost. He goes, no, you didn't. Stop. What? How do you know this? And eventually, my dad opened the door and said, think about it. Ahmed, you did not get lost. You find a new route to take or a shortcut for a different destination 
or a root to never get lost again. So he looked at it as I gained knowledge rather than lost something. Mm -hmm. My father would always say, you are in control of your mind. You determine what you want to become. You know how they say fake it till you make it? You know why people actually make it from faking it? It's because your mind starts to believe that and the universe speaks in intention. When you believe in yourself and you say, I want this, your brain goes, all right, universe, check it out real quick. Ahmed needs this. I know he's going through the air right now, but hold on a second. Give this opportunity. And the kinder you are and your intention is positive and welcoming people in, I promise you, the universe is like your homeboy. Check this out real quick. Get this. It's weird. I know it sounds weird, but the reason I'm in front of you today started out from a volunteering gig at Jasper Place High School. What volunteered my time and intention was to create positive mental health. And here I am. I got an opportunity to go to the uh, Power of the Arts from the Mikhail Jean Foundation. The former Governor General of Canada invited me. Went out there, I met the director of the British Council for the Americas. He said, do you want to come to Wales and represent literature for Canada? I was like, me? Yes. <laughs> then I went to Wales and worked with youth in a correction facility. And then I went to Sudan to teach poetry in Africa. The weird thing is, I went to my wife, I'm like, should I leave my ring behind? She's like, oh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, you're being influenced to think negatively. I'm like, you're right. I went there, I went to Sudan. Women have been studying since 1920. There were no guns in the street. It was because of the knowledge that I learned here to think that Africa is like that, but it wasn't like that. And the most beautiful thing is I left Somalia because of war. I went back to Sudan because of art. And that's the beautiful thing. That's where the intention comes from. If you're doing something beautiful, the universe will make its way to allow you to do that. And anything is possible. My parents hate when I mention this, but we literally had a home in Somalia that was made out of cow dung and sticks. We had nothing. I'm in front of you today as Edmonton's Poet Laureate, speaking my third language, bless you, because my intention was to make sure that I contribute back to my parents and I give to my community so that I can become a holistic individual and pass that along to my children, because as elders, as the indigenous elders said it best, you don't, uh, you don't own anything, you inherit it for your children, or you don't inherit anything, you borrow it for your grandchildren. Meaning what you have right now is not yours, you are just taking care of it for future generations. And if we look at the world like that, the intention changes from its mind to that we need to take care of this. It's a, it's a belonging that's all of ours. So with that being said, uh, if you have any questions, I am open to them. Uh, intention is extremely valuable. Remember, always ask yourself, why am I doing this? Do I want to do this? Or am I being told to do this? This is one exercise that I love doing to people. I want you to go like this really quickly. And this blew my mind because motivational speaker did it to me and I have to do it back to y'all. So go like this really quickly. Take this and put it underneath your chin really quickly. I said your chins. Chins. Oh. So what that goes to show you is, if you're not aware of your intentions, you are going to be manipulated, you are going to be influenced, and you are not going to be carrying your own message. Please, carry your own damn message. How many people here knock on wood? Raise your hand. Or have knocked on wood? How many people know where it comes from? Raise your hand. Why do you do it? <laughs> Why do you do it? Why do you do What's your intention? Why are you doing just something that's been done before? Please, ask yourself a million and one questions before you do anything. And when you wake up in the morning, may your intention be, when you look in the mirror, not my eyebrows on fleek, but how do I feel myself today? I love you, because if you're not telling yourself you love yourself, people will make sure that you don't feel that. Again, people aren't against you, they're for themselves. So if they're trying to compete with you, they just want what you have, so make it easy for them as well, and we'll all succeed together, because we all need to win. Thank you.